Okay, hello Cloud Gurus, I'm Ryan Krunenberg. And I'm Faye Ellis. And welcome to the Certified Developer Associate course. So my name's Ryan Krunenberg. I'm one of the founders of A Cloud Guru. I'm an AWS community hero, as well as an Alexa champion. And I've been teaching AWS for over three years now, and I've taught it to 600,000 people. So you're in very, very good hands. I've worked both as a developer, as a solutions architect, and a system administrator uh, for companies like Rackspace and a whole bunch of other managed service companies in the UK. I'm Faye Ellis, and I'm a technical instructor at A Cloud Guru. And I've worked in the IT industry for around 20 years, mainly in the financial services sector. And I've worked as a systems administrator, an architect, and also a developer. So in this section of the course, we're going to be exploring the exam blueprint. And if you've already done your solutions architect course, which lectures you can skip over. Um, but I will be honest with you, the developer associate is very different now to the solutions architect. So I would try and watch as much of this course as you can. Next section, I'll teach you what identity access management is at a very high level. We'll then move on to EC2, which Ryan will cover, followed by S3, which I will cover. So you'll then learn about serverless computing, and we're going to build a whole bunch of different serverless websites, including a serverless website that you can load your notes into, and then it will basically turn these notes into MP3 files using the Poly service. We'll store these MP3 files in S3. We'll then build an Alexa skill to go ahead and stream these MP3 files. So it's gonna be really, really hands-on, you're going to learn an awful lot. We'll then cover off DynamoDB, KMS, application services such as SQS, SNS, Kinesis, etc. I'll then teach you about developer theory, continuous integration, continuous deployment, code commit, code deploy, code pipeline, and finally we'll move on to advanced identity access management. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, hello Cloud Gurus and welcome to this very quick lecture. So perhaps you've already done the Solutions Architect exam and perhaps you've done the A Cloud Guru Solutions Architect course and now you want to go on and do the developer one. There is some overlap between the two, not as much as there used to be. It used to be that if you'd done the Solutions Architect course, you could basically just go do the DynamoDB section of the developer uh, exam, uh, of the developer course, I mean, uh, and then you'd be able to pass. That's no longer the case. The new developer associate exam is very, very difficult. This is actually pretty much the most difficult associate exam as it exists today. Uh, and you do need to do quite a bit more. So which sections can you skip? Well, uh, you can skip chapter two, identity access management, because then that is just the basics of how to set up users, how to set up groups, apply policies, etc. So if you know how to do that already, you can definitely skip it. You can skip chapter three, which is just basic EC2 stuff. So provisioning EC2 instances, um, provisioning RDS instances, uh, etc. Uh, and you can skip parts of chapter five. So you can skip it if you have done it in the Solutions Architect course. So this is where we create um, the serverless websites. So we have a basic serverless website, we then have the serverless website using Poly, and then we have the Alexa skill. You can definitely skip that, but only those lectures. You definitely need to do the ones on X-Ray. Um, you're going to need to do the ones on step functions, etc. Um, so that is pretty much all you can skip. The rest of the course you do have to do if you have a chance at passing the Certified Developer Associate. So wishing you the best of luck. I hope you really enjoy this course. It is very hands-on and you are going to learn an awful lot. So let's move on. Okay, hello Cloud Gurus and welcome to this lecture. So this lecture is for Udemy students only and I'm going to show you how to find the resources for individual lectures because um, Udemy has changed the UI and some students have been complaining um, that they can't find the resources. So let's go over to Udemy. Okay, so I'm in one of my courses on Udemy, the AWS Certified Solutions Architect Associate course. And if you look down here, we can see the different sections. So we've got section one, section two, section three, section four. But go to section four, we're gonna have a bootstrap script here. If we scroll down, you'll be able to see if a lecture has a resource, it's got a little folder icon. If it doesn't have a resource associated with it, then it won't have that folder icon. And then all you need to do is click in here and then you can download the resources. If there are any resources missing in, um, if I say it's available in the resources section, you can't see it, please let us know either via LinkedIn or via Twitter. It's probably the best way to get in contact with us or let us know on the A Cloud Guru discussion forums. So that's it for this lecture, everyone. Let's get started learning AWS. Okay, hello Cloud Gurus and welcome to this lecture. In this lecture, we're going to look at the exam blueprint. So let's get started by looking at the different domains and you'll see we have five domains. So domain one is on deployment, 
This is worth 22%. Domain 2 is on security. This is worth 26%. Domain 3 is on development with AWS services. This is worth 30%. Domain 4 is about refactoring, which is worth 10%. And Domain 5 is monitoring and troubleshooting. So this is the exam blueprint here, and we will put a link in the resources section of the course. So go ahead and have a read through this in your own time. Um, in terms of the uh, required knowledge, they recommend that you have um, a, an application or you have experience of maintaining an AWS-based application for one or more years inside AWS. They also uh, recommend that you do understand a programming language in order to do this, so in-depth knowledge of at least one programming language. Um, Understanding of core AWS services, proficiency in developing and deploying and debugging cloud-based applications using AWS. I'm not going to read all these out. You can go ahead and have a read uh, to the, of them yourself, um, but you should have some AWS experience. Don't worry if you don't know, that's what this course is designed to do. It's designed to give you some AWS experience so that you will be able to go and uh, pass this exam on your first attempt. And we will build out a whole bunch of different applications uh, in the cloud uh, throughout the rest of this course. Course. In terms of preparation, you can go over to the aws.com uh, forward slash training. This is going to be um, instructor led or virtual led three day course. Uh, it can be quite intense. Um, a lot of people do our courses just because you can watch them uh, on the go. You don't have to, you know, come out of the office for three days. But if you do want to break from the office for three days, go ahead and book uh, the AWS training. Now, there are an awful lot of white papers in this particular uh, exam blueprint. I actually personally think it's overkill. Um, we will cover off uh, basically all the things that you will need to know to pass the exam. I'm not going to do a, a lecture on every single white paper. Um, you should, if you want, uh, you know, to have 100% certainty that you're going to pass on the first attempt, you can go out and read all these white papers. It's entirely up to you. What I would definitely do is understand what blue-green deployments are. Um, we are going to cover that off in the Elastic Beanstalk section of the course um, because that will come up quite a bit in your exam. You may also want to read this uh, white paper, so blue-green deployments. Uh, in terms of the exam content, it's going to be multiple choice and multiple response. This multiple choice is where you've got one correct answer. Multiple response will be two or more correct answers. Do just make sure you read the questions carefully. Uh, and in here, you can see that um, your results for the examination are reported as a score from 100 to 1,000, and you've got a minimum passing score of 720. We've gone through the domains. Um, if you want to dive into a bit more detail with domain one with deployment, um, deploy code uh, in AWS using existing CI CD pipeline. So we will show you how to uh, set that up. Deploy applications using Elastic Beanstalk. Uh, we definitely will show you how to do that. Uh, prepare the application deployment package to be deployed to AWS and deploy serverless applications. We will build out our own serverless applications and even our very own Alexa skill in this course. Uh, domain 2 is around make authenticated calls to AWS services, implement encryption using AWS services, implement application authentication and authorization. And if you scroll all the way up to the very top, uh, where we do talk a little bit about security. So you can see it in here where it says, ability to write code using AWS security best practices, e.g. not using secret and access keys in the code, instead using IAM roles. Now, we will cover off what that means in the IAM section of the course, but if you ever get a scenario-based question where it's saying, should you use secret access keys um, or should you use roles, always use roles. It specifically says it in the exam blueprint, uh, and that will come up probably three or four times in your exam, so just bear that in mind. Moving down uh, from uh, development with AWS services, so we need to write code for serverless applications. We are going to build our own serverless websites in this course. Translate functional requirements into application design, implement application design into application code, and then write code that interacts with AWS services by using the APIs, SDKs, and AWS CLIs. Um, so again, we will be uh, doing this. You don't need to know how to program. We're going to be using um, predefined code as well as the serverless uh, application repository. Um, so we'll either supply the code to you or you can uh, use the serverless application repository, which we will learn about in the serverless section. Refactoring, so optimize applications to best use AWS uh, services and features and migrate existing applications uh, code to run on AWS. That can come up quite a bit in API Gateway, especially when you're asked to use XML and SOAP. But again, we will uh, come to that later on. 
And then we have monitoring and troubleshooting, so write code that can be monitored and perform root cause analysis on faults found in testing or production. So about the exam itself, it's 130 minutes in length. We have 65 questions. You will get your results immediately. Like I said earlier, the pass mark is 720 and the top score is 1000. It's going to cost you 150 US dollars. It's multiple choice and the qualification is valid for two years. And you're going to have a whole bunch of scenario based questions. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, hello Cloud Gurus and welcome to this lecture. In this lecture I want to show you a really cool way to study for your exams. It doesn't matter what your exam you're doing, whether it's the associate exams or the professional exams, uh, you can use this device. So this is an Amazon Echo. Um, Echoes are available in the United States, in the United Kingdom and in Germany currently. And all you need to do is go out and buy one. You can get one of these. You can get an Echo Dot, which is slightly cheaper. Uh, or you could go out and buy a Raspberry Pi 3 and build your own Echo. And if you don't know how to do any of that, we actually have courses on a Cloud Guru, which will teach you exactly that. We've got a free course, which teaches you how to develop skills for the Amazon Echo. And then we've got a paid for course, which teaches you how to develop 11 different skills, as well as how to turn a Raspberry Pi 3 into an Amazon Echo. So it's entirely up to you, it's completely optional, but it is a really cool way to study for your exam. So I'll show you exactly what, what I mean. Um, so we have a skill on the Alexa store called A Cloud Guru, and all we need to do to open it is say, Alexa, open A Cloud Guru. Hello Cloud Gurus. To begin, just say the letter of the exam you would like to prepare for. The options are A. Certified Solutions Architect Associate B. Certified Developer Associate C. Certified SysOps Administrator Associate D. Certified DevOps Engineer Professional and E. Certified Solutions Architect Professional Which exam would you like to start? A. OK, starting exam A. Certified Solutions Architect Associate This quiz has 10 questions. Just say the number of the answer. First question. Which AWS service allows you to run code without having to worry about provisioning any underlying resources, such as virtual machines, databases, etc.? 1. EC2. 2. EC2 Container Service. 3. DynamoDB. 4. Lambda. Is it 4? That's correct. Your current score is 1 out of 1. Next question. Alexa, stop. Have a great day. So there you go. It's a great way to practice, uh, especially if you want to be really hands-free. Um, so if you're cooking dinner or maybe you're out in the garden or maybe you're just you know, sitting on the couch but you don't want your laptop in front of you, this is a great way to study. And like I said, you can study for all five different certifications currently. And we have 50 questions per certification. And the best thing is it's completely free. Now, like I said, you don't need to go out and get an Echo. Uh, if you can't afford it, you can get Echo Dots. They're slightly cheaper. You can go out and build your own using a Raspberry Pi 3. We have courses on how to do that on the A Cloud Guru platform. Uh, but this is a fantastic way to learn uh, and practice, not just for your exams, but it's also a fantastic way to learn AWS, especially if you go out and design your own skills, because you'll start uh, designing skills and they all use Lambda. Um, they'll also be using things like S3, DynamoDB, and you can get your hands uh, really dirty while using AWS. So it's a great way to learn AWS and also to practice for your exams. So that's it from me, guys. If you have any questions, please let me know. If not, feel free to move on to the next lecture. Thank you.